Hello everyone, and welcome to Lesson 8 of Objective-C on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving a sort of a review of how objects really work in Objective-C. So, I've had a lot of questions uh, coming through about how these objects, or what, you know, why, why objects work the way they do, or how, what does this mean? Uh, just either maybe I haven't been explaining it well enough or just the whole idea of objects and classes are somewhat confusing people and it's understandable because I mean in C we don't have classes or we don't have objects so um, it's it is a different realm but um, I mean C sets you up with all the basics and Objective-C just is a it, it adds on to what C could do so um, Basically, classes are just one of those things that you got to learn and you will probably love uh, pretty soon in the future. But uh, until then, we're just going to, I'm just going to try to get you as familiar with objects and classes as possible. So here's the rundown of classes and objects in Objective-C. So every time you create a new class in Objective-C, you have two different sections, at interface and at implementation. The at interface hosts all of the face value things that a rectangle or whatever your class name is will contain. So we have instance variables here, uh, we just call ours height and width, which are basically the traits of our class. What the rectangle class, what makes it special versus some other classes. So um, we could add a color in here, we could add, you know, we could add whatever the heck we want, really. And that's what makes the rectangle class, um, or what makes creating classes great. We can define a few instance variables that apply to the class that we're creating. Then after that, we define the methods that we're going to be using later on in our class, and we just tell it the name and the parameters that go along with these methods. So um, that's how the methods, or that's what we do inside of our at interface. Create the traits or the uh, instance variables that our class will have, and we create the names and the parameters that go along with the methods later on but we don't explain how they work. That is saved for the at implementation section. So of course our at interface will end with at end as along with the same thing goes for at implementation. So the key part really here is this portion right here. And I think what you need to get, get from this is that NS object is the basically the over overseeing uh, thing that every other class works off of. Every object that you're looking to create is um, just a subsection of NS object. It's like if you take a block of wood, uh, the block of wood would be the NS object, and what you carve out of that wood would become the subclass. It's um, a more defined object, but the object, the NS object, is just the basically the over. Um, it's the technically it's the super class of the rectangle class that we're creating. It's just what every object that you create will come from. And the reason for this is because the NS object has methods that allow us to create the rectangle class as an object and different methods that we like to use in our classes that we create. So everything that's in NS object we can borrow and we can use in our rectangle class as well. So that's why we inherit information from NS object, and that's why we make this setup right here. So let's uh, move on, and the next part is at implementation, which always starts out with the import of the header file, and then we define what each method that we created, or um, basically we put onto a face value here in our at, at interface section with uh, just the name and parameters, so that's what we do in the at interface. At the at, in the at implementation, we tell how each method will be implemented. So uh, what each each method is going to do, basically. So this is the one method that we create, and that's how it works. And basically, we do that for all the all the methods that we do. Now at the end, we talked about the description method a bit. The description method is part of NS object again another real another reason why we inherit 
from NS object because when we go to call this class it's looking for this description method and this is what it'll call so that's why we like to inherit from NS object because NS object has a bunch of classes or sorry a bunch of methods that we like to use in our own programs so that's why uh, another reason we inherit from NS object so now I'm gonna get to the part where I think the most confusion is sparking from um, it's the part where we actually create the new object so when we go to create a new object we have to give it um, just the name or uh, the identifier of what we're actually creating so normally if let's say we wanted to create an integer we usually say int and uh, the type is int and then we just give it a name and the same goes for classes we're giving it the type which is the rectangle class and we create every time we want to create an object we use a pointer because the pointer all it means is that we're pointing to a block of memory that we create or allocate and that that's why we create every every object that we want to create is always a pointer it's just pointing to a block of memory that we've created in our code or in memory I should say so I don't think that's where all the confusion though is coming from the next the next part is where the confusion sparks so I'm just gonna type this all out here and that is this part here I believe is where um, people are getting confused so the, what's going on here the first part is um, an important thing to understand about Objective-C is that the parentheses work like a math problem um, or anything else whatever's inside the parentheses is what we do first so uh, the inner parentheses here is what we run first so the rectangle alloc method or the alloc method I should say is allocating enough space for this rectangle class to exist as an object so it's allocating enough space in memory so that our instance variables that are in our rectangle class can be created and that's the job of alloc it will allocate enough space so that our rectangle class can exist so once that's done and the object is created we then run the init method so now this right here is an object and we are now running the init method so there's two separate methods that are going on here the alloc method which allocates enough space for this object and then the init method will which will initialize some values that are inside our ns object and um, so, uh, we can later uh, change to do some certain things for our rectangle class which will make the init method very special later on um, the init method will later on allow us to uh, do a bunch of things throughout our classes we could initialize our height and uh, width right away if we want to which in general we will do so the init method will become uh, pretty important later on so uh, that's pretty much how simple it gets there's really not that much going on here and once we allocate enough space for this and we initialize the values we are ready to run with this block of code and this is passed on to the pointer the pointer now knows where this block of code is and it knows where its instance variables are so it can uh, basically access all these things and that's all that's really going on here it's not uh, it's not mission impossible to really understand it so uh, that's how that works now I had another person uh, comment on a previous previous tutorial about uh, a method called new and they said that in a bunch of other tutorials they've uh, continually seen new and they're just wondering what's the difference between alloc in it and new and the difference is uh, the, well there's actually really no difference for what I've taught you so far the new method is actually uh, inside the new method it literally calls alloc in it I'm pretty sure it does anyway and um, so technically there's no difference however new is actually fairly depreciated now as far as the programming of objective C goes no real programmers will use new anymore and the reason for this is because uh, when you use alloc in it you have a lot more flexibility so if I want to change my init method, I can I can change uh, I can make even a bunch of different init methods 
that will do different things. I can have init methods that will initialize the height and the width. I could have init methods that uh, totally do something else. I could have an init method that only initializes the width, not the height. I can have tons of different init methods, and that gives me a lot of flexibility for what I want to do. So the new method doesn't really give you that. It will create the object, and it will initialize the, the normal things that it has to, but that's it. And that's personally why I think um, working with rectangle alloc init works a lot better. Um, you, you know, if you really can't understand alloc init, I mean, I guess you could use the new method, but in all honesty, later on, if you become serious with this at all, um, alloc init is going to be the way to go, and it's how all the programmers use it for Objective-C today. So that's uh, just clarification for some of you who are wondering what what the new method is. It's literally what alloc in it is, but it doesn't give you the f added flexibility that you will get later on. And I'll be showing you that flexibility quite soon. So that's uh, pretty much that. So let's, I'm just going to retype this out here in it. And there we go. So that's my overview of objects. And now we're free to use this rect object uh, in any way that we want. We can uh, call methods if we want to. Um, we can set height values. We can do we can do whatever we want with this object now. This object knows that we have a height and width. It knows that it has methods that pertain to the rectangle class. It has all this information, and that what this that this is where objects really come into play and classes come into play with Objective-C. And this is really all I'm trying to get through these tutorials, is that you understand how classes work. And um, so that's pretty much it. I'm not going to bother with the description method. Um, if you wanted to see that, you can look at the previous tutorial. But anyway, this is just the grand overview of how objects work. We just create a class, we tell it that it's referenced from NS object, and um, Basically, we created an interface and an implementation, and then we just allocate space for our object. So that's pretty much the grand overview. And if I want to go to my graphic here, uh, again, just to show you how this works, we have to use information from the NS object class. We're using methods that are in NS object, and that's why we have to borrow information from it. So um, we're inheriting these two methods, which is alloc and init, and our description method as well is also part of NS object. So um, I hope this clarifies a lot of the things that you were wondering about um, Objective-C classes and objects. And if you do still have questions, though, feel free to leave them in the comments below under this video. And please, if I do answer, um, and I probably will answer anyway, but if I, if I answer your questions, don't delete your comments, just leave them there for other people that if they have questions of their own, um, they might have the exact same questions. So just leave your comments in there, and uh, I'll try to answer them, and hopefully we can get um, all, the, all the questions out of the way that we still have about objects and classes in Objective-C. Alright, so uh, if you are enjoying these tutorials though, Definitely more tutorials are going to be on the way, and a lot more exciting stuff about Objective-C. And if you do enjoy these tutorials, please subscribe to the channel. More tutorials are usually available every weekend, and um, sometimes through the week as well. So, anyway, uh, just yeah, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next tutorial.